Welcome back for episode 31 of the Escapade show and today we are joined with Ivan Kurtz. How we doing? I'm not bad, I just realised that's 31, that's my age, so yeah, there you That's go. why we've done it. I uh, uh, predicted that. Right, so let's <laughs> kick off with, <laughs> your name's not actually Ivan. Like this no. is the artist's name, so you're like Brad Pitt. A wee, a wee bit like that, aye, without the looks, I suppose. But yeah, I, my real name's Scott McFarlane. So okay, is, so it, Scott. Yeah. yeah. So promoter, DJ, producer, a million other things. Yeah, uh, probably a cruff champion as well. <laughs> uh, used to oh. show dogs when I was younger. A oh, right. professional football player as well. So yeah, I've been a few things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying out the, D, the DJ and just the promoter side now. The other, one, the other one's failed, so... <laughs> Crofts are we? I see you're a dog man anyway. I'm a dog man, yeah. I've been brought up with dogs for years, so yeah. Aye, that's basically my story. Is that a Labrador you've got? Yeah, uh, a German pointer. So aye, okay. Aye. So I, I, was, I used to show German pointers as a young gun. I was a uh, fourth best junior handle in Britain at one point, believe it or not. The trophy is up in my mum and dad's loft. Uh, so it was good. Go, eh? So it was a good fact to bring out in after parties. People don't believe it. And then, <laughs> You just show them a wee picture, Hold on. picture with my wee cord so and then my shirt and my big rosette, and, and <laughs> away it goes. You know. I did the picture of that. Aye, it's, it's a good chart line. Isn't it? That, that's quite. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you it is an after but, party. Uh, aye, it's, it, Have you seen this? I didn't know that. Yeah. She we just made my dog <laughs> day there. Is that the dog whisperer? <laughs> <laughs> so aye, that's special. So how from there then? So let's because obviously you're massively involved in the music scene here in mm. uh, so, so Paisley, Glasgow. Um, so tell us a wee bit about the, the journey into in music, some early influences. I've seen you were looking at some of the vinyls, there, some of the old trance stuff <laughs> and the hard style stuff and all that. So yep, yep. tell us a wee bit for, for there when you started getting introduced. I started off in high school and it was actually through a kind of workshop that kind of you guys do that was over across from my school. And it was a wee DJ workshop, so we went, used to go over there with my spare time at night. And we started... It was a uh, started learning how to mix and DJ and stuff. And one of the challenges was to run a an event with the school. So there was a big sports centre in Johnston called McMaster's. And at this point, we were going to the unders and uh, like the unders was going these the days. And uh, we were all heavily into kind of hardcore, happy hardcore, and, uh, hard house. Oh, your stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right. Music your ears, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> basically, we just decided to run this big event and the, the, and get the whole school going so we had to basically start from scratch do the planning get the security and all that so that was my kind of first insight of promoting and we booked dj dario for our chaos i don't know dario runs the cheetah and stuff like that now but uh booked him and uh yeah we just had a big mad rave in the sports center when we were all about we must have only been about 13 or 14 so amazing aye uh, so that was my kind of and like my step into promoting and then for there on in I just kind of built my way up I'd done nights in uh, Paisley it was more trans nights I had William Daniels play for me for the first like one of my first bookings and Mr David Forbes that you've had mm -hmm. on and uh, and then it kind of evolved more into my style changed into more techno it happened when I was at two, 2007 I was at Global Gallon and I was there to see like your Eddie Hallowells, Marce uh, Marcel Woods and all that. That's who I loved back then, Scott Project. And I, I actually took the wrong turn into a tent myself and I was walking about my Rangers tap on. I don't know why I had a Rangers tap on at a festival. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there was a picture of me at one of the tents with my arms out and the Rangers tap on. And it's like, fuck, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> but anyway, but I took the wrong turn into a tent and it was basically Sven Vaff was on. I was like, what? The dawn. I was like, what is this music? I never heard any mm -hmm. of this music in my life. Do you know what I mean? I was like, what is this? <laughs> and then for there on, I was just kind of blown away by the whole kind of techno sound. And I started going to my local club, which was Club 69, because uh, I'm for Johnson and it's in Paisley. So it was handy just to get back and forward. Spent numerous weekends in there, pretty mad with it. And mm -hmm. then uh, I, that's how kind of like, my techno the adventure started mm. that's cool very interesting a lot mm. of parallels in my own thing mm. we're very similar mm. ages thinking that so yeah. down the Dumbarton Shore it's what, you know you've got your bag full of batteries and your, your CDs and all that do you know what I mean you're, you're just turning up down there with like Scott Brown and whatever but it's amazing yeah. how the evolution starts though and like yeah. that wee mistake of you venturing into that Aye. that tent was what gave you the wow what's this kind of style yeah and that's that's what really happens like I used, I've been collecting records for years and 
I've seen you as well. Like when I used to go to the Undles, I would, uh, I would go to HMV first, have a scan through the tunes, and then buy my tunes, run back to Central Station, pay a quid for the locker, put my tunes in the locker, go way back to our chaos, jump away, probably get in a fight, and then come back out, <laughs> and then run back round to get the last train. Sometimes I'd miss it, then my dad would ground me and I wouldn't be able to go the next week to Archeos, but you'd grab your records for the locker, go home Aye. and play them the next day. And that was the buzz of just being into music back then. I thought, like, I used to love the, the buzz of just going to HMV and then going to dancing and then whatever you'd heard in Archeos, they would always have the records and that way, way before they came out in HMV for some reason. So it was like, you were, it was, you were always behind. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was, that was a, a Starting to like learn and understand about what DJ promos were. Like, why have they got that? And I kind of get a hold of this now. But that yeah. gave like, Vinyl that excitement because you'd be waiting weeks for something to come out. Yeah. And then once you got it, it was like that. We're talking about stairs about, you know, card games when you're younger and all that. Do you know what I mean? Once you yeah. had that shiny or that vinyl, you were like, yes, I've got something physical. Yeah. Which we were talking to Mark Sherry about. Like, mm -hmm. when he had this album come out, and he made a point of still putting it out on a CD because you put it out on iTunes, what, two weeks passes and the thing yeah. you've been working towards Forgot for two it. years. Aye. It's like that that short term, uh, you know, thing with music and, and films, I guess, as well. You know, it's like, whereas yeah. the final, the last thing you could do and then have nobody look at the, those, that they exist. They're, they're big pieces of Aye, they're history. Not, they're right, aren't they? And it's one thing I would never get rid of is my vinyl. I've got, they're up in my mum and dad's loft, but uh, they're always there when you need them, don't they? So, mm. uh, but that was, I loved it. I, I remember the first record I ever bought was Flint and Phil. True Love Never Dies, and the first record I ever brought that was stupidly overpriced was Eye Opener. Uh, I spent 30 quid on that, and that was a lot of money back mm -hmm. in the day, and I used to go to 23rd Precinct and get that off of Willie Daniels when he was working in there and stuff, yeah. so uh, that was uh, the whole, it was all about getting the tune before somebody else had them, because there was only so many copies, and Aye. if you played it, then you were the, you were the man, weren't you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> whereas whereas, whereas yeah, now so. it's a bit... You can get the tune no bother now, really, I suppose. I know, it's totally, mm -hmm. I felt myself as well, there's not a much, as much excitement mm -hmm. about the tracks these days, or like having it that early, unless you're, you know, somebody right at the top of the labels that get everything early mm -hmm. on. But I think even just the way it's kind of shaped now, it's like, depending on how busy you are, you might mm -hmm. download your tunes before a set. And yeah. it's like, sometimes you're going in and it's like, do you really know your tunes that well? Or it's like, right. whereas before you knew them inside out, so you knew when the break was coming, you knew when to take one out, put one back Probably in. There, there was less music though, Aye. which made that easier. Now mm. it's like, you need to almost be a week before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you've got a gig, then you need to check them a few days or a week before the gig because there's so much more out there. Aye. And you want to be fresh still. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's yeah. Certainly, certainly a point. But it's just the accessibility. Mm. As you say, yeah. like, there was a whole craft in getting the tracks. Mm -hmm. You were the man you're playing out some lap. Man, I've only ever seen Marcel Aye. Woods playing that. How do you get that? Or, yeah. But now you can just stream things illegally, download it. I know. No, it's, you would, like, that, we'd pirate radio stations back when, when I was young and you'd listen out to that and hear all the new happy hardcore tunes and all that and, you'd, and like it'd be really difficult to get a hold of them and that was the, the whole buzz I tried to get the joy the joy I just like, right, record it on your tape play it non-stop then mm -hmm. eventually you'd find somebody who was selling it you didn't have really mm. discogs and that back then and you could just jump on and steal a record so aye uh, but yeah it's, uh, it's it's changed now I don't now when I'm playing music I don't really search for new music actually I, 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 I'll go back the way mm -hmm. for some reason I, I find I listen to like an old hot and set and I'll find maybe what one of the tracks is and then I'll find the artist and then I'll go and search his stuff for like 1999 and stuff mm -hmm. like that exactly. and, and it, it just sounds so current when you play yeah. it out these days and that's like, I'm the way I'm thinking these days is backwards Aye. Mm -hmm. yeah. I find that as well especially mm -hmm. in the in the production studio as well like mm -hmm. um I mean, I went through years of just amassing so many sample packs and, mm -hmm. and uh, VSTs and plugins. And then before you know it, you're bogged down. You're like, where do I even start? So yeah. <laughs> too much. When I'm like teaching folk or what they learned and they're right at the start of their journey, I'm like, just use a 909 drum kit. Uh, just yeah. use that. Yeah. And like, what do you mean? Do, do you not need all these sample packs? And I'm like, nah. Yeah, because yeah, really, don't. if you study it all back, uh -huh. If you kind of get the tracks going with a nice 909 and, and work with what you've got, and that's, see, for me, that stri strips mm. out all of that nonsense yeah. and gets you just working yeah, no. with what dance music was created on, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I'm certainly going backwards in the studio now, which is which that, is pretty that, cool, that rather, than, rather than using mm -hmm. 
I mean, all the latest spice sample packs and, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Well, I'll always have like, a joke, you know, and any time he's getting a new one, I'll be like, then we'll, then we'll have enough. No, really. uh, I'm still a, like, a geek for software and all that, so I'll be like, yeah. oh, that new instrument looks great, and then he'll be like, oh, then it'll be right. <laughs> then you'll be the number one, number one hit, yeah. well, you know, it's, uh, like, yeah. but it's, it's, it's working with the tools, but there's obviously nothing wrong with having choice as well. Mm-hmm. But it is, it's like, it's just the world we live in now, so much noise and confusion, it's like, you don't know how to make a decision. No. There's uh-huh. a million DJs, there's a million tunes, so it's mm-hmm. like, and then it's like out once, and then there's labels now putting out four tracks a month and all that as yeah, well. You know what I mean? Oh, aye. This uh, Beatport gives me the fear, man. Like, I, I just, I don't know, I can't spend too long in Beatport. I, I need to, I need to find a, as I say, I need to find an artist and then just go on a, a, a journey with the artist mm-hmm. and, and what labels they've they've, they've, they've they're they're related to and stuff over the years and stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's, it is a, it is tough. Aye, so going back to. I'm interested in that when you first started running your night. What was that night called then? Was it in Paisley and you're booking Will, Willie Daniel and Dewey Forbes and all that then? Uh, yeah, it was called Deception. So it was. Deception. It, that work was fucking terrible, man. It was like, <laughs> it was like you'd big red, white, and Deception, and it was like right. two devils in the right, each side. Right, like, right. Symmet- oh, that's cool, that's cool. Do you know cool. what I mean? And then it was just, it was like, <laughs> uh, but uh, they, were, they, were good. they were fun nights, man. Like, we, we'd, we'd done them on a Tuesday night, believe it or not. Right. Was, uh, a trans night on a Tuesday, but. Uh, we managed to get in good numbers for it, but uh, when it was 2007, you said, was that? It, they want the ones would have been before that. Before, I uh, before that, I think maybe 2005, 2006. Right. Uh, so it's kind of similar culture time. So I'm asking because I had a night for, ran for three years called Culture. Similar, culture, aye, aye. and uh, it was ran it down here. Mm-hmm. And I was like, first, I'd done, done my first one. I was 17, so I booked D- David Forbes. Well, that's how I know the guys now as friends, you know, yep. and, and Mark Sherry, mm-hmm. Malachi Lee. Aye, all these guys because I was going to inside out. Aye, same. I was, and I was like that, and yeah. then when I actually got a response from them, when yeah. I was that age, like no way, Willie Daniels get back to my message. Aye. he's going to come and play a gig. No way, wait, tease here about this. Aye. and uh, that's how I managed to get uh, get it going down here. But it's so so mad that similar it's journey. So like, similar, aye, yeah. um, it is. You're running a wee night and getting into it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Getting the feeling it out. I was inside out. That obviously got me into that stuff, and I always remember one of my first inside outs with Mario Picotto and me and my, my wife today still actually is and uh, we were waiting for Komodo because it was a big tune that just came out at the, the time and it was mm-hmm. all the charts and waiting for Komodo to come on like, yes come on here we go <laughs> so we got we're doing the front on the barrier and it was pretty rammed in it it drops Komodo it's just that it's getting the wee singy bits coming in mm-hmm. My bird faints with fucking just with excitement and everything getting honestly kind of getting <laughs> <touched for it. laughs> she, she collapses. So I'm like, I have, I have no choice. I was either hurt the tune or her. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I pick her up and I was carry her out of the medical box and missed the whole fucking tune, man. I was, like, I was like, oh my god. So I. <laughs> funnily enough, me and my cousin Davide get thrown at <laughs> thrown at the arches to see Mauro Picot, and I never got to see his set. So there's something about Mauro's sets. It's like uh, me and him out. ended up having an argument. In, in Italian I'm like you know and we get flung out <laughs> in the tears are screaming steaming uh, out on the street we're like we've just missed that full set I know it was I was, it was quite funny that's actually. horrid mate but she was alright and she's still here now so. aye that's uh, good aye, so. that happened to me once man at one of those big events and people just started what I thought was like a kind of bit of a crush situation going on but it wasn't it was just people just fainting yeah. in the, the excitement aye. and all that and people were just getting pulled over the barriers Mm-hmm. So I'm like, right, I better go over the barrier or not. So I just put my hands up and went over and just, people were just falling over the, the front uh-huh. of the, the barrier. It's just that's crazy wild scene. Everybody kind of faint, yeah. the excitement of being at the front and all that. It's, it's actually one of the, the, the principles I kind of take into my promoting now. Like, I'm quite, you know, about space and being able to dance. Like, I've been going to DC 10 since, since you, like, before it was properly changed to, a, like, Circle Local, really. Like, the new style Circle Local. And it was still busy and rammed, and I was just like, how can, why, why is I dancing somewhere that you can't dance? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So everywhere I do my platform 18s or I do my warehouse parties, uh, I always make sure I don't oversell stuff because I think mm-hmm. it's important for health and safety. This is something I've learned over the years. We're working with the council for doing my street parties. That these things are important, like, like 
there's nothing worse than being crashed crammed in somewhere mm -hmm. yeah. and, and you're trying to enjoy the music and I, I, I hate that when I went to go to DC 10 and stuff I don't know claustrophobic I've, I've been uh, in before and it's, it's a, nightmare. It a nightmare I mean I've got a guy behind me like wanting to square go me because I'm like leaning into him and I'm uh, like mate there's 3,000 people pushing uh, me mate uh, <laughs> what is your problem Capriati's blowing her heads off just calm down <laughs> you know what I mean he's uh, like stop pushing me like I, I, I used to DJ and Suburbia and Paisley. I don't know if you, you do you remember Suburbia. I don't think so. No, it's, Claire would know about that one. Uh, she'll know. It's it's it, was, it was a place to be in Paisley when Paisley was booming before it went a bit of shit. And uh, uh, the back space was called The Edge, and it used to be always mob. It was the man. It was it was a, the club that I DJed. It used to be a, like a strippers pole in the middle. I used to sit and watch people when I'm DJing. And Paisley's a bit mental sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's a bit rough. And the uh, Somebody would bump into the pool, but they'd turn around and think it was the guy next to the pool that pushed them or hurt them. And then every weekend, somebody would just start scrapping because of this pool. <laughs> so it got to the point they had to take the pool out and all that. Right. It's just, it's mental. Like, that just, pool's like, starting <laughs> fight. <laughs> Common denominator, yeah, man. Take that yeah, pool away. Yeah, it's either like an, an overweight, ugly bird chat idea, a backflip after or somebody's fighting it. It's, it was, it's, Jesus. It's, uh, I have some sites there. I wonder where that pool is now. <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's known my room. <laughs> so you keep fat, right? uh, uh, no, I, I used to DJ, and that's when I played Scouse House. Actually, I don't know if you went through a Scouse House period. Uh, there's a definite period of that for sure. In the barras, it was quite. Uh, there was uh, all sorts going on. I loved the Scouse House. I used to go down to Wigan Pier for that. It used to be your Lacoste tracking and that, and mm -hmm. bounce about with your pals and think you're mental, but it was good. This, this is good <coughs> remember the Wigan Pier CDs for sure. Aye, they were cl classics. Aye, so. and then you, you got Silver as well. I used to go there. Yeah, you see DJ Vans and stuff like that. So. It was, I went to, I think Silver done an, an Unders, didn't they? I don't know. Or was it Mass? Was it, it was called? Mass, aye. I, I went to Mass. Aye, I, I, I got a black eye in Mass once, so did. <laughs> it was a. Uh, Going to church and all, <laughs> does they sound right? Oh, my dad's tight, man. I know. <laughs> That's blasphemy. I know, I know. I know. But, but that, because that mass started when our kiosk gets shut down around the corner. Is, is, is there unders now? For I don't ones? know. There has to be. I'm just the, not the, in touch the, with well, it. Well, I, I don't think any of us frequent them, so we probably wouldn't know, but I, they're, they're still unders going because uh -huh. I've got a couple of young people on the, on the online and Facebook and uh -huh. stuff, and you maybe see, like, like that wee Nile. There has, been has to be, and for sure. There's got to be. I thought there is, because it's, it's important for young ones to get into a club environment early. That's how you kind of learn, and if it affects the, the clubs, obviously I own Club Sixty Nine now. So you're hoping that the young ones are well. That's it. You're bang on, mate. And mm -hmm. and it's exactly what we we do with the, with the studio. It's, that's one of the reasons why we find it so important to work with young people. Mm -hmm. If we can introduce them to DJing like yourself at that DJ workshop. Yeah. That you went to then we might not be sitting with Ivan Cuts today and you might not be doing platform 18 and all the rest yeah, of it no. because of that wee bit of inspiration mm -hmm. so they are the people who are going to be buying the club tickets they are the young people that we've got to inspire especially in an age where everyone wants to sit in and watch Netflix or yeah. on their phone or stream it in their big telly back home with 10 of their mates as opposed to go out to a club night yeah like, you know what I mean? there's a lot of factors in there. that's what I find with the whole club and scene now it's a uh, there's factors in terms of uh, money to go out and young ones are just sitting in their gaff now really mm -hmm. and, and it's hard to, to pull them out to go and see a DJ or they're, they're staying in the gaff and they're going to the after parties because it's cheaper it's mm -hmm. there's a kind of dilemma there now between the whole club and scene mm -hmm. I think because it is so expensive why would you go and see a DJ at a club when you can go to a festival and pay 60 quid and see a, 10 of the DJs you want mm -hmm. do you mm -hmm. know what I mean so the DJs are playing three times a year in the one city or, or in Scotland so there's too many options, I feel, for people to go and see a DJ. Whereas when I was younger, I was like, the DJ would play maybe once every two years. Mm. And, like, you never would never yeah, have that would come, like, you'd be like, that's the only time I'm going to get to see him. I mean, <clears> and, <throat> yeah. but there's so much choice now for young ones, and it's kind of, I find that a bit difficult with the club in that sense because it's it's enticing them down to the club to, to come and see Yeah, him, to come out. come out. And, again, it goes back to, the, like, the educational side. It's, mm. like, make, like, you know, showing them the importance of going out socialising we were talking about that a wee bit before we've spoke about that a fair bit like social skills and young people now are really it's quite a s issue it is we because be. like you're not socialising with your neck at a 90 mm. degree angle staring at your phone do you aye. know what I mean it's <laughs> did it into intimacy that's a, aye, that's I a hope thing that, that, how do you talk to you or flirt with somebody now but there's that many bar barriers now like what can you do as a guy or when you're mm. you flirting with somebody or whatever so I can see why it could put them off it and 
And that's that. Awesome. When the push comes to the shove, there might be all this bravado on Tinder or whatever it is for people. And then when it comes to it, they don't go on the date because they're, like, they're riddled with insecurity. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because the apps created that because you're not out in a bar chatting to someone naturally. Yeah. It's all been built up. Uh-huh. for months yeah, yeah, on yeah. their phone do you know yeah. what I mean it's no. madness it, it? it is yeah. scary but even like, um, like people are just becoming actually more lonely mm-hmm. being to going on social media because see I ask mostly every workshop that we do I'll ask a young person like you know what did you do that weekend mm-hmm. like, how long did you spend on your phone about nine hours nine hours mate that is the average for like young people spending spend the time on their phone oh, crazy, imagine you were putting nine hours into DJing or making music yeah, or mate, doing yeah, a craft yeah, 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 it's like that's how you would get ahead of the game by taking your head at the phone and putting it into something but yeah. learning guitar nine hours a day do you no, know what I mean not, you'd be amazing that's not good you'd be but two weeks in man you'd be one of the best <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean it's like it's, it, what's your stance on phones in the club uh, I think I think there's, there's a limit to it. I think a wee video here and there is all right and stuff like that. But I was in Amnesia last year. I was last year for MusicCon. And there was a guy next to me. It just killed my buzz, man. He, he, he was he had his phone and it was waving in front of me. And it's just it's like, get in my way. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I understand why people do it. Do you know what I mean? It is good for promotion in terms of your club, DJ, whatever. But... I think there's a limit to it. Like when you, go, I've been to the Bergen a few times, and it is good just to go in there, and you don't need to worry about phones or anything like that. But does it work in Scotland? I think it would. I think we're not culture culture there. It's not the culture yeah, for it, and it's yeah. it's a massive culture of Love Island phones, mm-hmm. stuff like that. You know, so it's like with that, you've got to find the balance. I usually, well, I think we spoke about it in one of the podcasts. I usually find a lot of the smaller clubs that are like no phone policy is usually because there's no much a crowd in there, so they're like, don't pull the phone uh, out, it's banned. Yeah, you know, it's like because at the end of the day. As a promoter, mm-hmm. you want somebody to put some viral video out there, a dancing peaker coming, smashing it, and it puts the club more in the matter, yeah, yeah. you know. But yeah. it is, it's a scary place to be in because technos know about that either. No, it's not. I, I don't find there's much phone action in Club 69, to be it's honest. Not, no, it's not too much. No, there's not too much of it. I think uh, people are aware of the space and that, and they don't really mm-hmm. want to get involved with people. So Definitely agree. Uh, <clears throat> at Platform, I don't think there's been... I've, I've never really... So we're, I'm quite proud of the, the crowd that come to Platform over the years because it's, it's been a, a crowd that are well-behaved. I've never had any really main issues. They kinda, they've always been there for the music and listening to sets. I don't feel the young ones these days have got the attention span to listen to a DJ for like two, two to even three, four hours anymore. Mm-hmm. Like that's I, I used to love going to see a DJ for play that long. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, it seems to be that they're all well-behaved. There's not much phones flying about the Platform, which is cool. Uh, and I think it, it would help promotional-wise, but that's why we've got our own guys to do that. Like you've got a videographer and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, pro. but I wouldn't just go out and say ban fo- like phones and that. I just don't think. Nah. I don't think it. I don't think it works that way. It's going a bit too against what's already happening, mm-hmm. isn't it? You can't like, stop. You can't it. stop progress or whatever it is. You know. Yeah. Like. I, I think that's what's stopping older ones going out, but is the young ones. I think when that was younger and into techno, I know I was young, the same as the young ones are now, but. We were, we were there for the music and dancing and having a laugh with our pals, whereas the young ones are a bit kind of more just getting a bit more fucked up and mm-hmm. swinging their phones about. And I think that annoys older ones, and that's why we've kind of seen a downfall. Something older ones come to the, to the club, which used, used to come regularly, because mm-hmm. the young ones are a bit more, a wee bit over the place. But the young ones are the ones that spend the money at the bar. They're, they're the ones that, yep. that, that, that do... That do support the club in that sense so yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tricky balance to get yeah definitely <clears throat> so see like on the lead up I've obviously you've been doing nights and stuff and, and all of that so you obviously when you went to see Sven Bath was it yeah, and, yeah. And, and then did you go back with this newfound energy that I want to do a night or I'm going to start DJing more or what was yeah. the, the motivation there like yeah I, I decided to just <coughs> look into more of the techno stuff and I started a night in Glasgow called Nomad and it was it was in art school with people like Karate, Heartfrob eh, and we had we done an outdoor party with Radu which is one of the big Romanian DJs it's minimal kind of stuff which was massive at DC10 at the time and so that was kind of how I progressed into that it was art school was a good venue we used to we sold that out and stuff and then I decided to go to a fit to do the season in 2012 and that's where it kind of penny drop for me when I came back for the season that I wanted to do something bigger scale and something different to Glasgow because mm-hmm. 
I was kind of a wee bit bored doing club nights, if you, if you know what I mean. I've been doing it for a good few years and I was just went, decided to go a walk after a couple of days come back for a, a wee fun. Came Pure depressed. <laughs> aye, one of the come downs, aye. And uh, just went, I came across West Street and I uh, just had a wee look about and thought to myself, I was with, I was with Roscoe for Fuse uh, at the time because he was playing at one of my nights at St Jude's and we just he just says it's possible eh? Cause I because mm. it's it's possible really but mm -hmm. it's it just finding out who owned the street and and all the kind of avenues you had to go down it was I eventually found out it was the council avenue so yeah I had to build up a, a plan really to convince mm -hmm. him to do a, a big rave on the street which yeah. is <laughs> at that time it was there's a bit of stigma between electronic music and just doing stuff like that. It was like the Archies was shutting down, yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. Like that. So it was pressure on the council uh, as well, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it was I had to kind of make up a well, no make up, but just build a plan around not just a rave, mm -hmm. really. So, we, we incorporated a uh, like mental health because it's close to my heart because I lost one of my good friends through that. So, I fit. I Went to Sam H, spoke to them and seen how we could communicate with eighteen to twenty five year olds, mainly males, mm -hmm. and uh, and they says that music was a was a good way of doing it. So I, I thought let's let's build, let's build the party around that. Brilliant, so. it's amazing. And in West Street as well. So you, that must have been a mad moment, like just going, hmm, that's just quite cool. Like and, and uh, what's amazing about it is like just how the, the street kind of ends. Yeah. And so it's it does seem like it. At that point, you're like, man, this could work. So, like, yeah. there's no through. It's made yeah. for it. Yeah, it was, it's almost totally made for it. Eh? Yeah, it was. It, the reason it was, it was kind of a sad story why that that street is a dead end because there was an accident that happened years ago where there was a, a drunk bus driver and taking kids to school, right. and, and he went, he hurt that bridge, and a, a, few, right? a few of the kids were, were killed there right? and stuff. So, yeah, that's the reason that that's shot. That right? that's, okay. So that's that. And that so that. It's a bit of a mess, the whole street, to be honest. It's, a, it's in between two of the depots of the council, which uh, they, they clean it. Mm -hmm. So none of them want to clean it because it's like a grey area and they say, no, that's your bit. No, not ah, your right. But it's not really. It's just, it's, it's one of the depots, but they just don't do it. So my whole philosophy was basically to clean that street up, bring something more positive to it because it has obviously uh, been... A bad, bad history. A, a bad history. And show that... And it kind of relates with the mental health things that you can turn things around mm -hmm. and it, it, it can be doom and gloom, mm -hmm. and, but you can gradually do things to make things better. And that's what we've done in that place. It's it's now known for a good thing yeah. than the bad thing, but obviously people still pay respect to the, yeah, whatever yeah. happened there in the past. But it's, uh, I, I see it's more, I see that you got to progress in life and move on and there's no point actually just letting think, link things. Yeah, yeah, mass respect to you, mate. That's a, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. You know that whole overcoming that that what happened there, and mm -hmm. I mean, you know, a lot of people probably won't know that as well. No, um, it's, it's so, new news to me. Uh, it's, it happened quite a few years ago, I so. <coughs> but yeah, and, and as I say, we clean up the street every year. There's always junky needles down there and blah blah blah. But in yeah, it's it, we turn into something special, mm -hmm. and that's what I hope it is. Does it work quite well logistically? People getting in and out, and yeah. So basically, we have to file for a road closure. <laughs> but this year is the first year I've actually done the setup the day before. I don't know why I've never done it the day before because right. I think because you need to pay a fee to to close the road, and I mm -hmm. thought that you would need to pay an extra fee for uh, another day. But it doesn't. It just it, 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 one fee like you can have it as close as long as you want. So, ah, right, okay. so I only found out this year. So we we do the setup. We're going to do a setup on the Friday, adding more kind of visuals and stuff like that. And this is the first year we're doing it for two days. So. Yeah, it just takes the stress off because we used to come in at like eight in the morning, have to get the road sweeped by the council, then get everything set up and ready to go for twelve o'clock. Right, that's and quite a short space. A Four short, hours, man. That is a short space of time, and and the council still need to come down and sign it off. Right, I've got to the stage now where the council can I trust what I'm doing now, mm -hmm. so they don't really come down to check, but they can. If, mm -hmm. uh, if but yo, I'm very proud of my working on standards. Mm -hmm. If you do things properly. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you're not cutting corners then you can't go wrong mm -hmm. like and, and you don't piss off the wrong people yeah mm -hmm. and the end of the day is health and safety at the end of the day the council have got these regulations in for a reason it's mm -hmm. uh, so we, we just do everything to the book mm -hmm. and that's why we've been going for six years i think thing is if you don't it's like they've got the power to shut it down 
and then it ruins yep. your whole thing yep. because somebody's trying to cut a corner or whatever. Like it's mm. it's it's no on when you're yep. trying to run a business. It's like you can't just mm. you know it's no. Yeah. It's, this is trying to be a professional thing, and if you're mm-hmm. you're at a point you're cleaning a full street and all that, yeah, it's beyond just a club night or whatever. And it's since I've started doing that, you you, you kind of build that. Like you look at everything now is health and safety. So I go to one of these after parties, which wow, I used to I look at that. But I used to go, I used to go after parties all the time and get mad with it and never, never get a fuck really. But mm-hmm. but now since I've started doing this and I go to one, I played one. I don't know why I even played. I shouldn't have played, but it was on. <laughs> it was in a loft, right? And it was on. The decks were on cardboard boxes, and there was like like heated lights, like disco lights, on top of the cardboard boxes. I'm like myself. If this goes in fire, you're mm-hmm. up in a loft. A loft. There's about two, three hundred people in here. This is, We're all this, going. This is a disaster. Right. You know what I mean? So there's just wee things like that. that well, <laughs> no wee. It's like quite a big thing, but like I, I, you, you kind of yeah, yeah. it flags up. Totally. <laughs> Do you not think that's that is an important point though in terms of like it needs to get regulated and like see how there was obviously this big expose recently of this journalist that went into all these uh, after parties yep. and then actually she yeah. had a really good time and everything was brand new. <laughs> just like, uh, let's bring this down. I don't know what I'm going to say, right? But obviously she's been getting pelters she's just doing her job right but Uh surely it's like the arches or whatever it's like oh somebody died we're gonna have to shut it down it's like you're not gonna stop drug taking or people partying by shutting a venue down yeah so maybe it's better to actually get this stuff regulated so people can be safer and then instead of going into things like that it's already checked health and safety sorted go and have some fun after party fun yeah i I can understand why these people run after parties because the the kind of rubbish laws we get for three Mm -hmm. o'clock license or four o'clock now but yeah, the, there is a point of safety that comes to it. Like there's going, there was nine of these after parties going at one point in the winter. So was there? Uh, I knew there was a fair few. It's but 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 the ratios. It's going to there's going to be an accident one of these mm. times, isn't it? Aye, like, aye. You know what I mean? But it's uh, either it's. I used to when we done after parties back in the day. It used to be for the club of it night that you done. So we do it in art school. And then we would run a bus to the after party, and it would be every day for there. But now it's changed and people are using the after parties as if it's a business and a cl- like a club now so they're opening at 12 and then mm. finishing at 8 and you kind of feel the effects if you own a club and stuff like that as well because people can miss out the club yeah it's almost like the after parties are just so responsive to the laws yeah. and the way it is mm-hmm. so it's like it's the, the core is like the way they the, like you know the way they go about the the drugs and, and like the way they you know they should be testing and keeping it safer as opposed to making people feel that mm-hmm. they're uh, outlaws and then yeah. they're you know breaking the law so people are like yeah. well i'd rather go and hang about an after party and, and spend my money there with my mates and i'm not getting that kind of yeah judgment yeah no, so absolutely. it's like response to mm-hmm. maybe the, the councils or the government should be looking at you know let's adopt a, a dutch way of looking at this here let's adopt a portuguese way of looking yeah, at yeah, yeah, the yeah. drug issues and yeah. as opposed to just you know because you can't even shout and ball about the, f- the fact that after parties are happening they're happening for a reason yeah. you know what i mean it's like, yeah i just i think we're still very backwards in scotland like I was up at a council here in another, another week there for the club yeah, about licensing, and, but there was a somebody on before me and it was a hairdresser's basically wanting to sell alcohol to a customer, just just a beer, mm-hmm. but while you get a haircut, mm-hmm. me and you think, what, what's wrong with that? Mm-hmm. Some but barbers do it, yeah. I had somebody for the council and uh, somebody for, uh, what were they called? Basically your, your health your health being whatever but they, and they were putting in a big rejection about this saying oh no this is encouraging drinking and it's, like, it's a beer getting a haircut calm down do you no, know what I mean stop overthinking uh, it overthinking it it's like we're, we're so backwards and these people are no helping like the scene at all with, with this attitude yeah do you think yeah, it, yeah. a part of it though is like some British Scottish people are just shocking on the baby like, like people, one, like people, one ruins it for everyone. You know, it's yeah. like because it's like eating, cheating, and all that. You know, and like absolutely hammering it to the point. It's like you know, yeah. Yeah. fighting or whiting in the corner, and you're like, what? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I like, but we always do ruin it. Like <laughs> the, the, the perfect example is the guy stabbing the horse and kill the kill Grove Park after the Queen's Jubilee. You know that one, though? No. 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 Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> aye, was, Vegans turn this uh, off now. Aye, <laughs> the, aye, the Queen's Jubilee, the, the, big, the, the big party in Kelvin Grove aye. Park, 
I remember that. And this fanny runs up and stabs a horse, man. Like, it's like, only in fucking Scotland you would do that. Probably his tap half. Uh, don't know what he would say. Uh, but then you get that, then, and that ruins it for, I will, say there was 80% of people were like as responsible, uh, you know what I mean? Then the 20% are doing things like that. Aye, uh, it's, it's murder. And that's, that's brutal. That, but that's the uh, Scottish culture, isn't it? And, it totally is, but I don't, I don't think it helps when you, like, put laws on that you can't drink after 10 p.m. or drink bev- like get bevy before that. I think that just makes you more frustrated. Mm-hmm. I think it's the wrong way of doing it, telling people yeah, what they can totally. not do. Aye. Aye, we're not well behaved, but there's must be there must be other angles we can look at it. Yeah, because again, it's no, it's not really the the bevy that's the problem. It's how you use it. Aye. You know, it's like you can't. Eat, it's like I mean, surely if they really cared about our health, why would they sell tobacco? Aye. Like why? Mm-hmm. It's the biggest mm-hmm. killer in the world. So it's like if they cared about your actual health or you know what I mean, yeah. you would not get access to that. So yeah. it's picking and choosing the poison is what does mana in the most. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like how can you you can't just do that and then do this. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. It's, so it does it does make people more frustrated and do mm-hmm. bad worse things. Like you're gonna get bevy anyway if the bevy exactly. bevy f- shuts. Aye. You just open another can of worms, didn't you? Aye, and the thing is, there's another responsive thing to the, the shops shutting at ten. That dial abuse. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? There's responses to this the, the stupid laws they're set up. Oh, of course, though, there is. People are going to do it anyway. You yeah. might as well do yeah. it right. And make your money set from it. Set it up properly, man. I know. Mm-hmm. Make the money from it. But there's pubs in Glasgow that you can have a, a pint before 10 a.m. if you buy a pie. Aye. But people just don't eat the pie, so <laughs> it's, like, it's like it baffles me that there's like a bunch of ten council people just sitting on a table and they just they go like that to sell. Do you know what? <laughs> that's a good that's, idea. That's an idea. As it? long as they eat their pie, uh, it's it's a law. It, you, you can do it. It's it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it's a real. That's a completely mad law. That one. Uh, so. Then obviously like it, Italy mm. and uh, mm. France, though you're you know 13 year old uh, youngsters there having a nice red wine with their dinner yeah. they feel part of it having a drink isn't a big deal yeah. and they grow up with that like, why yeah. is there a big fascination with getting absolutely hammered yeah. out your nut well I'm used to alcohol earlier on the culture is completely yeah. not, not the know. same but it's, it is all down to the culture because we were even talking about it earlier like people don't really seem to know good food you yeah. know, and it's, I was telling you a story of my friend and that, and it was like, oh, this great place, and it was all overcharged, you know, shite toasties and all that, and you're yeah. like, so it's like being young, getting introduced to a wee bit of wine, because I, I even got that, you know, and a wee bit of water in it and stuff, and you didn't even yeah. really like it, you know, like... Oh, but it's shown that there's not this big taboo about it. No, no. no I, 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 once I have kids, I'll be definitely be introducing it at that age as well, I think it's... I think that's the reason why it is mm-hmm. so well behaved abroad. You won't drink till you're 18 and then you, you hit 18 you're like, yes! Aye, that's uh, right. And you go nuts. Aye, aye. But, but, you know, but even before that, you're still, aye, you're still, you're, you're still getting your... your you're, getting you're your, sneaking your, it. You're still getting your bottle of Mary down for the shot when you're 15. Of course, you know, you're, you're sneaking it uh, out rather than... Uh, I know. Why, that, but your straight. parents think that you're, you're holding off to your 18, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's not happening. Now, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of things I want to take off right before we end this show today, right? Now, one which you'll probably be happy to hear about, right, is this taboo of getting to Paisley to Club 69. Oh, right. Yeah. right. I see it all the time. Mm-hmm. You're like, you, you're going to a club at night, nah, it's too hard to get to. Like, no, it's no. Aye. So can we explain some simple ways in 2019, right, <laughs> how to travel Aye, on well, your own well, to somewhere five minutes outside the city? Yeah, well, but people always feel that Club 69's in Timbuktu, so mm-hmm. it's... Uh, it's actually 13 minutes from Central Station. It's nine minutes on the train, and then it's a four-minute walk for Saint uh, Fe- Paisley to the club, and then you, you go and have your party, come back out, walk four minutes to the taxi rank at the train station, and then your ten minute, ten pound, fifteen pound a taxi up the road, which is a share in between four. But three that, people. Aye, uh, and it's that's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So, yeah, that's that's our whole campaign with Club Sixty Nine, which we're going to try and uh, push in the next few weeks. And also, we've got the we've got a uni there in Paisley, which it, it's got two thousand foreign students staying in it. Uh, it Eighteen thousand pass through it every year. So we're going to target them. They don't know the clubs there. The, the clubs seeped in history. It's thirty years old, but. To p- new people coming to the Paisley or staying and going to uni, they, they don't know anything about it. And it's a magical wee electronic club there just in the road for them that they can just come down to. And mm-hmm. it's, I'll try my best to book the big, biggest names. Obviously, in this industry, it's difficult with DJ fees and, and that. But I've got a bit of 
good leverage because of platform and their reputation. So I'm hoping that it catches fire a bit in the next six months and it's only 200 people, so it's not a big ask in the, mm-hmm. the end of it. So, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's great, you know, and you get you get the chance to tap into those solo sets that, you right. know, you can go to a festival, you can do all this, but there's something about that intimate setting yep. yeah, that you can really so get, intimate. cut teeth if you're going there an 18, as an 18-year-old and, you know, you might have mm-hmm. your mind blown, you might right. get into DJing or something. I know. Well, I, so. I think it's... It's a it's a great club, Club Sixty Nine. I don't think there's many of them in the world like Club Sixty Nine. You've been in it yourself. It's mm-hmm. dingy underground. It's got a stinking carpet, but that's a little part of yeah, yeah. clubbing. And just plus, the, you don't know. Yeah. You wouldn't. It's so yeah. unassuming. Yeah. You would not know because it's behind the street. Aye, and it's, it's under under a restaurant. Under a curry restaurant. Aye, I wouldn't advise going to the curry restaurant before you come in. Mind you. But that's what they used to do, <laughs> wasn't it? That's like that's how it started, uh, wasn't it? It's like people would go to the dance and after. Uh, <laughs> Cue the toilet. <laughs> I, I, I've made that mistake a few times before I'm DJing, going to a curry house. No, never again. Nah, nah, definitely eating light before the gigs. Definitely. Aye, I, I, I was in Manchester once and it wasn't curry, I mean, I went to a kind of street festival place and before I played and I had this kind of chicken, chicken dish or something. Hmm. And halfway through my set, all you hear is the stomach going. And I was actually staying in the name B&B with the promoters. But they, they decided to throw a massive party for the club back at the thing. So I started, you, you can imagine the sweats, the shits, everything. And then it says, oh, you've got a wee room in the back there. But it, it was like come, people just coming in all the time, Aye. slamming the door. And you're up just booking, booking a train back up the road. That, just like that, that like, I couldn't stay there for any other room, man. It was like, <laughs> so I was like booked a train. It was like seven in the morning. I was like, I'm jumping on that next one. And mm-hmm. it was a murder. It was murder on the train journey, but I, it was worth it. But I would not you, you've never had some experiences like yourself. But that, that, that's the thing. It's like people think it's always greener, like going and DJing or whatever. But it's like you know, DJs are human beings as well, and, and shit like that goes down. The, so excuse the pun, uh, but the, 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 the traveling yeah. thing's the worst, man. Like especially after it, like. It's, you get carried away and you just always want to you feel rude if you don't socialise with Aye. the promoters don't you so it's yep. see the, the journey home man it's, that's the whole thing I can't handle about DJs I, know, I, know. I, was, I was at a place Liver, uh, Liverpool a few months back and you know you're parting back at the hotel with them and stuff like that, and then you're just like mm, I want to get up the road Aye. and then you're like shit you're I'm re- stuck down here you're and right? my, my train's not until and I'm like no nah, I'm not waiting another day here I'm Aye. like you know really we could be doing me some sleep and whatever else yeah, yeah. and you're like mm, I'm so far away here this doesn't feel great so yeah. I went straight to the train station just like first train Aye. I was like I'm going to at least I'm dealing with getting home Aye. and I it feel, <laughs> feel better about a progression <laughs> so and it's like <laughs> uh, you take the steps by steps because <laughs> I sat down in one of the the chairs and the guy came up to me and says, oh, you're not sitting there. And he says, mate, I'm fucking sitting there. Don't get away from me. Like, <laughs> like, I just need to get up the road. I'm, the way I'm standing now. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. like, it's so, aye, I know, the DJ life. Aye, uh, absolutely. <laughs> it's all glamour. It's all glamour, mate. Right. What were you going to say? Right, so, in ter- right, so in terms of just like giving back, right, so let's I always like to try and round it up with some nuggets of advice for people watching, right? Uh-huh. And that way we give it at the end so they've got to sit through all this shit until they get into it. Right? <laughs> so basically, um, what are some top tips for someone looking to firstly just get involved in the DJ scene or mm. someone who's maybe like, do you know what? I don't really want to be a DJ, but I want to run some club nights and stuff. What are we bits of advice you could give to anyone looking to get involved? Well, I think you need to start small, obviously. So, like, we, the Club 69 at the moment, we've just brought in a, a load of new promoters and it's been it's been a great success. It's great to see, like, these young ones getting all their pals round up. Like, we've, we've booked guests big name guests and they've not gotten as many people as you guys are getting mm-hmm. in they're just rounding up their pals and they're all coming to support support them so that's it if you're young just get a club night and just get your pals to come and support you the best way possible you can work on your sound as it comes like like you, you'll probably be into the more like bigger tunes the ones that stand out but once you start playing more and more and get that experience you, you'll, you'll dig in more into like the the tracks that people don't have and stuff like that so mm. Yeah, like that's the bit that's the biggest advice I would give to somebody doing that. And then once you build your way up, try new things, um, build contacts, uh, do things for charity. Like we, the club, we're doing stuff for charity as well. It's important, do you know what I mean, to 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 keep everybody involved and mm-hmm. make make them feel special. So uh, yeah, that's. It. And then if you if you feel confident enough, then you you go for the bigger ones like the platform 18s. But that takes time. You're not going to do that and the space of a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That, t- that took me a, 
a good 10, 10 years to build that up. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and a, lot is, a lot is based on reputation as well, as you said, because if you've got a good reputation of running a party for 150 mm. people yeah. for three years, safely as well, and maybe yeah, safely, you, yeah. you book a handful of good guests, and those good mm. guests know other DJ friends that will go, No, he's brilliant or she's brilliant, yeah. you know. Go and play go for and them. Get, go and get in about that, and, and maybe uh-huh. a big party will come your way. That's uh-huh. a good bit of advice. Uh-huh. For sure. it's, uh, it's, it's networking as well. And like, if you're running big events and you're doing, you've got bills to pay, like people to pay, always pay your bills, man. Like, see if you're, if you're paying in time and you're getting, people use you again. Like, so like I, I use the same engineers and all that, and they're all they're, they're the best I feel for what I do. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's just respect and like dealing with people and doing everything properly. I, I, I've always felt that's the way forward and like pay your way and mm-hmm. don't and don't and don't try and cut corners with it. That's mm-hmm. it. Excellent, excellent advice. Mm-hmm. Start small, work your way up. Actually, work very hard at yeah, it. Yeah. Do a bit of networking, and and what was the last one? Then pay your way. Pay your way. Pay your way. Yeah. Excellent, yeah. man. Yeah. Absolutely excellent. excellent. Okay. So that's us then. What, a, what an episode. Thanks so much for coming on, mate. That actually flew in, man. I can't believe how quick I know. It is. They, they always do, but it was, we packed a lot into it. Aye. It was good. It just, it just means we could, uh, you know, leave scope to do another one. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, if you fancy coming back on and we could do a wee post event. So actually, let's do a wee last bit of promo. When's the next Platform 18? Because we'll get this out before it kicks off. People oh, yeah, can okay. go. Yeah, so Platform 18 is coming up on uh, 3rd and 4th of August. It's two days. First time we've done two days. And it's nice. Probably the biggest lineups yet. So Saturday's Detroit Love. So it's a bit of respect to the the founders of the techno and stuff. Uh, you've Excellent. got Carol Craig. You've got wow. Derek May. You get uh, Derek Carter. Even though he's not for Detroit, he's for Chicago. But they're all interlinked. Mm-hmm. So uh, and you've got Fraser Campbell for London. It's playing and myself. And on Sunday, it's a bit more techno orientated. You've got uh, Emily Lenz. Uh, Probably the biggest techno DJ about now, I would say. Yeah, so huge. Huge, you know. Uh, and you've got Ben Sims, wh- one of my favourite DJs. I've actually booked him 10 years ago at Club 69. That was one of my first club nights in the club. It comes back round. Uh, it does, That's it, amazing. It does. Uh, he mixing four turntables at the once back in the day, so he was unbelievable. But uh, So he's playing. And he, we have Octave One Live. It's obviously done a big tune, Blackwater, which everybody knows. Uh, and uh, Frazier. Yeah, so he's he's playing. He's one of my good friends. So yeah, it's going to be a good couple of days. And f- the after parties are going to be at Club Sixty Nine. We've got Carol Craig playing the Saturday, nice. and then Ben Sims on Sunday. Hopefully, we can twist Amelie Lendy's arm or something. I don't know. Okay, who knows? Who knows? So <laughs> it's yeah. good good to hear a couple of Scottish DJs on the lineup as well. Yeah, I try to I try to always balance it out with like people in the scene. I like live sets in my lineups as well. So I always try to have a wee live mm-hmm. set in there. So. Yeah, that's what's coming up. And in the club this weekend, it's quite a big one. We've got Salardo playing on Friday night. Jeez, oh. Uh, and we have... It's massive. Uh, it's big, that one. That's so, massive, uh, man. So, and then Big Miz is playing Saturday. Next week, Cobasol. And then Gary Beck's doing his uh, Beck audio party at the end of the, the, nice. month, end of the month, which is... Excellent. Which is, I'll be pumping. Uh, I get Luke Slater playing them, so... Yeah. And you just had Dead Speaker there as well, didn't you? Yeah, Dead Speaker, yep. And uh, ah, it's, been, it's been a good year for the club. Uh, it's Massive just, year. Yeah, it's been good. Maybe so, the biggest, really. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it, was, it was kind of a bit rocky for a while with the previous owners and stuff, but it, I think we're starting to stabilise right. it and get Excellent. the right people It's good to see the scene thriving here in Scotland. It's directly stuff. linked to us, Paisley's right there, you know, and, and we're right here, Glasgow, so it's all, everything's all interlinked, you know, it's great yeah. to hear. It's, okay. uh, it's brilliant, it's thriving for sure. We yeah. see the, the wee clips that we usually cut and put out is like a wee teaser. We'll need to do the one where it's just giving directions to people like that. <laughs> this is how you get a train. <laughs> <laughs> this is how long it takes. I, I know, I know. <laughs> It's baffling how many people just think it's miles away. Well, I know. Well, we were saying before we, we started rolling as well, like people with Dumbarton, we, we get Same that as thing. well. Because Dumbarton's almost like up at Aberdeen way, you know, like, <laughs> for, for, for most folk. Uh, the what, Highlands. What train do you get for Dum- to Dumbarton? To it's, uh, Dum- you can from Dumbarton East or Dumbarton Central. I, We've it, got two stations here, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, so it's, it's the Highlands, but what, if you're in Glasgow, it's uh, Highlands with Central or Balch. Both hit Dumbarton East. Uh, Highlands with Central one gets you in 22 minutes. Aye. Uh, which is rapid, uh, and then going into Glasgow, you can either get Edinburgh, Cumbernauld, Drumgella. Endless options. Endless options. Endless. Man. Endless. Okay, so so I. So well, that. thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Well, thanks very much for having me, guys. Right. Cheers, man. Loved it. It was, uh, it was a pleasure. Right. Episode thirty-one has been wrapped up. We have cuts. Thanks again. Cheers. Next yes. one. See you next time.